Next Wednesday's the test. Now, before we get into the PowerPoint notes, I want to bring something to your attention that you may or you may not be aware of. Hey, where am I on this screen? I'm in Blackboard, and I headed to the My Math Lab, so I clicked the My Math Lab. I'm going to click, see the tab here, it says My Lab and Mastering Course Home. I'm going to go there. Hopefully it hasn't timed me out. Looks like it's happy. Maybe. There it goes. In preparation for the test, do you see the tab that's highlighted there? Can you read what that says? Study plan. Aha. If you click on the study plan, there are a couple ways to do this. Recommendations, progress, all chapters is what I'm going to go with. The reason I'm going with all chapters is because that way you can control which sections you're looking at because we did not do all of chapter 2, for example. Um, in chapter 2, if you'll recall, we did understanding and solving 2A, and we did extending unit analysis 2B. If you click on one of these, it'll give you example problems from that. We went to chapter 3, and I've skipped chapter 3 here, okay, and gone straight into 4, which is where we are now. Let's click something from there, and whoa, look what it does. It gives you all kinds of study problems to work on. So if you're looking for a place to come up with problems, and I heard some folks asking before, oh, wait a minute, how do I get back to the my math lab to look at my homework problems type stuff? Well, here's a way to go after some homework problems type stuff. Okay, so I don't know, let's try something like this, just randomly pick one. Okay, and you get the idea. It'll allow you to do computations, it'll check them, all kinds of good stuff like that for you. So you've got, wow, till next Wednesday to work through this. Am I going to take this up for a grade? But sometimes people say, well, gosh, how do I study for this? Where can I go? Where can I find more problems? Two places to go, or that come to mind to me immediately. One is to go to this study plan. Another place that you can always go to get more homework or more practice problems is go to the e-text. Wow, rats. You can just go straight to the text and enter the page number, but without seeing the book, it may be a little tricky on figuring out what page you want to be on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and go to the section that allows you to choose by chapter, if it will let me go back. Insisting on that. Here we go. See the one that says chapter contents? You can click on it. If I want to do stuff in Chapter 4, I'll click Chapter 4. Then you can choose the section you want to go to. Well, let's try 4A. Now, watch video, view the text, work in your study plan. Oh, you can get to the study plan from here as well. Or you can view the e-text. And when you go to the textbook, it has all the homework problems, just like what you would normally find in a textbook. With those, does it have where you enter in and it tells you if you're right or wrong or just lists the problems? In this one, it just lists the problems. It's just like in the book. If you were to turn the page in the book open and it lists all the homework problems, okay, there are problems there to work on as well. Now, how do you get there fast? Well, I'm going to kind of guess that maybe it's about... 10 pages, so I'm going to add 10 to that and zip over to page 202. Okay. But you get the idea. There are several places that you... Ah, here we are. We're in homework problems. There you go. See it? So for section 4A, the homework starts about 10 pages after that chapter section begins. In most cases, the homework starts about 10 or 12 pages after the chapter section. Makes sense to you on places to find problems to work on. Okay, This test will cover everything from day one all the way up through 4.D. 
and I'm hoping to finish 4D today. Okay, so is everybody good with that? Okay. All right. In 4, section D, we were taking a look at information regarding mortgages. With regard to mortgages, we already talked about the fact that a mortgage is an installment loan. What does it mean to be an installment loan? Like the same payment. Right, the same payment every month. Credit cards are not an installment loan because you can vary the amount you pay each month, can't you? Okay. We talked about the fact that you need a down payment. What's a down payment? Yeah, it's money that you bring in up front on the purchase of the house. And the way that'll typically work is you're working with the realtor on getting a bid in for the house. You find a house you want, okay, and you put in a bid. Now, hopefully you've done some homework and you know about what you're willing to pay for that house. Depending on the neighborhood, and depending on the time of the year, sometimes you're going to have to pay list price. And I've even seen it where people pay higher than list price because there are three or four people putting in bids on the same house. And all crud, somebody's already got a bid in at 230. I guess I got to put in at least 235, and somebody else comes in at 240. And then you got a counter. Okay, and at some point, you've either got to say, you know what, I'm going to cut bait and move on. This isn't the house for me or realize that you're going to be paying a lot more than asking price. Be careful of that. It's like an auction sometimes. Okay, don't get caught up on, we've got to have this house. Okay, there are other houses out there. The down payments which you show up with. When you go to a closing, there'll be a bunch of people sitting around the table. You will have already talked through the details with the loan officer and tell them, I'm going to show up with my 20% down. What's the advantage of having 20% down? Well, I don't have, I don't have to borrow as much money. That's true. Okay. Let's say, just to keep numbers easy and somewhat realistic, let's say and you're buying a house for $200,000. Chuck, I thought you said realistic. Yeah, 200000 is not a spectacular house. Really? Go to the MLS. What's an MLS? Multiple listing service. Okay. And if you start looking at houses, multiple listing services means there are multiple realtors listing their house there. And you can look in various sections of town or locations. Okay, and put in a price range and see what you're going to get. It's kind of interesting to throw in something like $120,000 and see what you're going to get. Odds are you will almost immediately say, uh, let's up that a bit. Okay, so $200,000. Two ways to go with this. One, you show up with at least 40 or 20% down. For your down payment, let's say you show up with $40,000. That's 20%, isn't it? Holy mackerel, I've got to have $40,000 in the bank? Yep. Think about your monthly budget. How's your savings going? Savings, dude, I'm lucky to eat. Okay. okay, down payment 40,000, which would mean you're gonna borrow how much? <coughs> yeah, so the loan is gonna be for 160,000 because the total purchase price is 200,000 you're going to show up with 40, the bank's going to throw in 160, the seller gets their 200,000. What happens after that? They don't much care. As far as your end of the deal, they've got their 200 grand and they've got places it has to go. We'll talk about that. Okay. In addition to the down payment of $40,000, you have closing costs. Closing costs, what do those pay for? Inspection, appraisal, 
the contract fees, the, like the attorneys that write up the contracts. Oh yeah, they got to pay for that. Does that loan officer get paid? Oh yeah, they got to eat too. Okay, so there are a variety of things that go into closing costs. Title search, do a title search to make sure that the people who are selling you the house really own the house. Oh, hmm. You ever heard of identity theft? Okay, there are people who've had their houses sold out from under them because somebody else stole their identity and sold their house while they're living in it. That's got to hurt. Okay, so some of the things that are included in the fees are those as well as a credit check. They are going to check your credit. They're not going to give you $160,000 and say, hey, you look like a nice person. I guess you'll pay us back. They're not. Okay, another possible charge is something called points. The idea of a point is to discount the interest rate. Now, by discounting the interest rate, it means you're going to pay, pack, pay back less interest, doesn't it? So it's going to save you money. But you got to be careful how you shop this stuff. Sometimes it's worth paying points. Sometimes it isn't. Okay. When we bought our house, I knew we weren't going to go 30 years. We just weren't because I know how that interest works. It's outrageous. So I said, forget the points because reducing the interest is in your benefit if you're going to be paying a long time. And I knew we weren't going to be paying a long time. What I did instead was I took that money that we could have used for points and I threw it into the down payment, which made the down payment bigger, which made the loan what? Smaller. You want to borrow as little money as you can. When you go to a loan institution, okay, realize that they're going to say things like, you are eligible for up to $210,000. You're only borrowing one hundred and sixty. dollars Do you want any extra? Why are they offering you extra money? Have you ever gone to a car sales? And they show you a car and they say, hey, do you want the luggage carrier on that? Yeah. Oh, hey, this is really cool. Do you want this navigational system on it? Man, you ought to hear these speakers. Do you want this Bose sound system in your car? Do you want the custom trim? Look at the wheels on this. Why does the car dealer offer you all these extra options on your car? Or the, it isn't yours yet. You haven't bought it offer you extra options on that car they're trying to get you to buy. They want, money. they want your money. They're trying to sell you more stuff, aren't they? When the loan officer says you're eligible for 210, are you sure you only want to take out 160? They are trying to sell you more money. A loan is you buying money because you're going to pay back the 160, aren't you? But what else are you going to pay? Interest. You're paying for that money. Realize that them saying, well, you know, we can throw an extra 10000 in there is exactly the same thing as saying, dude, you really need these custom wheels and this pinstriping on the side of the car. Same thing. Different person, different location, the same things going on. They're trying to sell you more stuff. Okay, so be aware of that. And they're going to say things like, well, when you move into this house, you're going to find there are things that you want to fix and things you want to do, and you're going to need extra money. And you know what? That's absolutely true. There are things you're going to fix. There are things da-da-da. One of the best pieces of advice I got from my brother-in-law when we bought our house was, don't change anything for a year. That doesn't mean don't put up a new roll of paper towels. That means don't tear down walls, don't tear out flooring, don't, don't do anything major for a year. Live with it and figure out what's really important and what you really want to change in the long run. Okay, Your priorities are going to change in that year's time. That flooring that looked kind of really vinyl planking in the kitchen, what were they thinking? 
Well, they were thinking a couple of things. One, it's waterproof. Two, if you drop glasses on it, it doesn't shatter like if it's a tile floor. I wanted a cool tile floor. I mean, cool tile. Wow, I am so glad we've got this vinyl. Look, things bounce off of it. Tile's cold in the morning. Wait till you step on that first five degree winter day. Barefooted. Woo! Okay? Give it a year. Okay. When you go to the loan companies, there are a couple different ways that you can do the loan. One is a fixed rate, the other is an adjustable rate. And they do exactly what the words say. With a fixed rate mortgage, the interest rate's fixed for the entire 30 years, 25 years, 20 years, 15. Whatever you set this loan up for, it's fixed. It's always going to be that rate. Always. If they ever try to change it, you can sue them. They can't change it. Because they've got on the contract that says, we will keep it at this for 30 years. And their name's on the line. Okay? Adjustable rate mortgages. As the name infers, the <coughs> rate can be adjusted. Bless you. Okay? They can adjust the rate. Now, in the mortgage, it's written in there. They can only be adjusted at, for example, year three and year five. And each adjustment can only go up by 2% or whatever they write in or won't go down by more than, whoa, they can adjust the rate down? They can. What do you think the odds are that they're going to adjust the rate down? Mm, yeah, right. This isn't grandma you're dealing with. Okay. They're giving you this money because they're, they're planning on making a buck. They aren't giving it to you. They're selling it. Okay. About 10 years ago, what happened in the housing market? It got really bad. Remember the housing bubble where prices were going crazy and boom, everything exploded. And well, How'd that happen? Well, part of the contribution of, of that, not saying it's the whole thing, the administration and government at that time decided that everybody deserved a house of their own. So they told the banks, you've got to start making loans, even though the folks don't look like they're quite so good on their credit. Okay. And loans started being made to folks who before wouldn't have qualified for a loan because they <coughs> deserve it. Okay. This may sound kind of weird to you and it may kind of hurt your ears. You, people don't deserve a house, they earn a house. Okay. My kids know not to even go there. But, Dad, I deserve this. Because when they were about this big, I started with them. Why do you deserve it? What did you do to deserve it? How about you earned it? And then once you've earned it, you get it. But people had the idea, well, I deserve a house. I mean, I live, I breathe, I eat. I deserve a house. And they started giving loans out to everybody. And one of the things that they would do is there were a lot of people who couldn't afford the payments. Okay? Chuck wants this $400,000 house. We can't make the monthly payments on it. That's okay, Chuck. We're going to help you. We'll give you an adjustable rate mortgage. With this, what will happen is, for the first three years, we're going to put you in there at 4%. Now, Chuck, aren't you going to get some raises over the next three years? I've been teaching long enough to say no. Or maybe, I hope. But a lot of people are thinking, yeah, I'm going to get raises. I'm going to get raises. Okay, what's going to happen with this adjustable rate mortgage is that year three, we have the option of changing up the rate. It might go down. It might go up. It depends on what's going on at that point. It's just an option. Yeah, well, right. You know that option went to automatic, and the rates went up. So now they're at 6% or 6.25%. Okay. What does that do on the monthly payments? It increases them. So let's say Chuck's payment before was uh, 850. Now my payment is, uh, let's say, 1025. Ooh, that's another 175 bucks a month, isn't it? Think about your budget. 
can you easily come up with 175 bucks a month, every month, that you can just shift right now to mortgage and say, no sweat? For a lot of you, not so much. That's going to take some real work, isn't it? Okay? And a lot of people, there were some people who made that first jump, and some said, well, I didn't see this coming. And another thing happened in that time frame. The economy was awful. People weren't getting raises. You were dropping to your knee and thanking God if you had a job. Instead of having to go out and spend your eight hours or ten hours looking for one. People weren't getting raises. So here, somebody, Chuck is into this three years. He's been making his payments. And then one day, boom. What's the deal? They want $10.25. I've always paid $8.50. Well, welcome to an adjustable rate mortgage. Man, I've not gotten much in the way of raises. I haven't gotten enough raise to cover that. I guess we got to sell the dog because we can't afford to feed that anymore. And Well, we can't sell the kids. Um, you get the idea. And then at year five, guess what is an option again for the bank? Going up. Let's say take it up to 8% now. I'm just making these numbers up, and it's now $1,200. Well, the company Chuck's worked for is providing him a couple of raises. Okay, If you're going into education, what's a normal raise for the year look like? Any idea? Zero to 2% is common, is standard raises in teaching. Zero to 2%. And there have been, my wife works at Fairfield. There have been years where she's taken pay cuts. Everybody in the district took a cut. No raises this year. We're cutting you. Well, imagine if you're in a situation, thankfully, we have Becky's and my income, and we never spent anywhere close to where the mortgage was. What would happen to Becky if she would have been alone Bull would have stomped me to dust out in the field somewhere, and now she's alone. The mortgage rate goes up to twelve hundred bucks, and she gets a pay cut. Where's that lever? In a world of hurt. And what was happening was things like this was happening to people can't make the loan payments. And well, what happens if you can't pay your monthly payments on your mortgage? They throw you out. They foreclose, they take the house back, say, hasta la vista, baby. Well, where am I going? I don't know, but you're not going here. They change the locks on the place, and you're gone. What about all the money you've paid them? You get that back, right, because they took the house back? El rongo, they keep all the money they've taken. Oh. Okay. This happened to a lot of people. That was awful. It was awful on a lot of people. There are folks still trying to recover from that 10 years ago. Okay, I'm trying to protect you so you're not one of those. Okay, don't do adjustable rate mortgages. Now, sometimes people come back with, yeah, but if you're only going to be there a couple of years, an adjustable rate is the way to go because they give you a really cheap loan rate for the first three years. My comment is if you're only going to be there for three years, don't buy a house. Why not? I gotta live somewhere. Rent, lease. Okay. There are places like PG with their young execs. They move them every couple of years. Move them as in from like Cincinnati to Hamilton. No, move them as in like from Cincinnati to Frankfurt, Germany. If you buy a house, okay, let's say you buy. Eh, nothing real fancy, just a house, $200,000. That's just a house, okay? That's not these cool things that you see. When it comes time to sell it, what some people say is, yeah, but it's going to go up in value, you hope. You hope. It depends on the neighborhood, depends on the economy, depends on the number of new housing starts. 
let's say your house does go up in value. Six thousand dollars. So you can sell it for two oh six. Cool, I've made six grand. No, you haven't. You've lived there three years. Is that house going to be in great shape, freshly painted, all the carpets looking good, the landscaping looking great and everything? Or is it probably going to need a little work? Probably going to need a little bit of work. So let's say on the work end of the deal, you drop $3,000 in it. Dude, I'm not going to, that's not a lot. That's carpet for one room and maybe some paint. That's not even buying a bunch of flowers. How much does it cost to put a bunch of flowers out front? Make it look nice. Easily three to five hundred dollars. And that's if you plant them yourself. Okay? So you're going to drop three thousand in to get it looking good. You're not going to sell this thing on your own. You're going to bring a realtor in. Well, let's see if I can spell it right. Realtor in. Percentage-wise, what's a realtor get on the sale? Six, eight, ten. Let's be really nice to you. Let's say it's only seven percent. If it's seven percent, that's another fourteen thousand dollars. Whoa, 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 whoa! Back up the bandwagon. I'm gonna pay the realtor fourteen thousand dollars to sell my house. You sure are. I hope things go well for you. Okay. Now take a look at this. The house now sells for $206,000, right? How much money have you put into that house? $17,000. That comes out of this. Oh, uh, what's this going to be, about $189,000? After you pay the bills, how much money do you take home? 189. Oh, wait. Are you really going to pay off this $200,000 loan in three years? No way. The bank wants their part back, don't they? Okay. In the first three years, most of the payment's going to be interest and very little's going to principal. So let's say at the end of the three years, realistically, uh, you've paid off $10,000. So you still owe $190,000. Okay. So what's this closing going to look like? You're out the three grand for flowers, carpet, and paint. Before you even get your check, the realtor at the table gets passed a check for their amount. The bank's going to get passed a check for how much do you still owe the bank? 190000 Well, dude, we got a problem here because after you pay for this other stuff and the realtors, you only have how much money left? $189,000. But the bank wants how much? One hundred and ninety. So what do you just say? Gosh, sorry. We came close. And leave? Is that, is that how it works with the bank? No. You see that door? They close it and they say, cough up another thousand bucks. Now where does that leave you? You've been in the house three years. You sell it. And after you sell the house and all the dust settles, you still owe the bank what? thousand dollars. So as you're moving out of the house, you've also got to hand the bank a thousand dollar check to move out because you're not going anywhere until you pay them the rest of their money. Does that work out real good? You're better off leasing if it's going to be a short term stay. The nice thing about leasing or renting is when your time's up, and a lot of leases, they'll even have clauses built in that if you give them two months' notice, they'll just, you know, you're out. When you know you're out and moving on to Frankfurt, Germany, you let the renter or the landlord know, I'm going to be out of here, headed to Frankfurt. Love the place. Thank you. You've been wonderful. Two months later, you pack your truck, flip them the keys, and you're gone. 
Nothing left behind. All right. How do you figure out where to get your loan? I'm hoping you're going to shop it, and like with a car, you just don't walk into the first place and say, oh, I'll take that one. Charge me whatever you're going to charge me. I'll take it. Is that the way to buy a car? Well, if you want to get scammed, that's the right way to do it. Um, shop it around. Look at several different loan institutions. They're going to have different packages to offer you. Here's a situation. Okay. Let's say you got a great down payment. You only need to borrow $100,000. Or you're buying a fixer-upper. What's a fixer-upper? It's a house that's kind of a mess, varying degrees of mess. But you're thinking, hey, I can watch YouTube videos and replace the cabinets and this, that, and the other thing. Are cabinets expensive in the kitchen? I don't know. I just slam the door in the morning after I get my cereal out. It's just a cabinet. Really, dude? Leave my dirty dishes on the counter, but who really cares? It's just a counter. To replace cabinets and counters is easy thirty to $50,000. And that's not granite counters. That's just plain old four mica counters. Oh, I got a whole lot more respect for those things hanging on the wall. Okay, which of these two loans are you going to take? Great bank, $100,000, 30-year, 5% fixed. Closing costs, $500 and one point. The one point buys you down to a 5% loan rate. On our houses, I never bought points because I knew we were going to retire those loans fast and it really wasn't going to pay off. I just took the extra money and threw it against the down or into the down payment. Which of these is the better deal? Great bank looks kind of interesting, doesn't it? How about big bank? Lower interest rate. Closing costs are higher, Chuck, and I got to pay more points. Before you decide on one or the other, actually sit down and do the numbers. If you go to an amortization sheet, remember we've looked these up already. Right, where you go online and it tells you what your monthly payment's going to be. Okay, I already did that. For this first one, it's going to be $536.82. For this second one, the monthly payments here are going to be $521.65. Huh. You would expect the second one to be a little cheaper because the interest rate's lower, right? But does that lower interest rate really pay off? Because, man, you got to buy two points. you got to pay $1,000. Let's figure out what the total payoff is each way. For Great Bank, the total payoff. Now, by payoff, all we're looking at here is the total amount of money you send them back on your mortgage payments plus the closing costs plus the points. That's all we're looking at here. Okay. Well, the total payoff is going to be, well, the big part's going to be this $536.82 I send them every month. How many months are you going to be sending them that amount of money? A lot of months, right? 12 months in a year for how many years? 30 years. Holy mackerel, that's 360 payments. Does that make sense? The 360 comes from 12 months in a year times 30 years. And that's kind of annoying to put that in. There you go. Add to that, the closing costs are $500. And how do you figure out how much a point is? A point is 1% of the loan. To get 1%, you move the decimal over how many places? Two. 1%, oh, I got to pay $1,000. Now, what this $1,000 is, is money, you write them a check up front and say, here we go, here's the thousand dollars. In agree or in exchange for that, they lower the interest rate. So
So the idea is you're giving them some money up front, but in exchange you're saving interest over the next 30 years, and hopefully it'll pay off. You gotta figure that out yourself. Okay. If you add all this up, so you got the 536.82 times 360, the 100 or the 1,000 and the 500, by the time you've paid this all back, you will have sent them $194,755.20. Basically double what they gave you. It's not uncommon, even with low interest rates, like we have now, rule of thumb on a 30 year, you're going to buy one house for you and one for the bank over that 30 years. When the interest rates go up, you buy one house for you and two for the bank. So in essence here, we're paying double what we borrowed, aren't we? Okay. Big bank. Pay off. Okay, so let's see what's going on with Big Bank. Well, what's the monthly payment to Big Bank? $521.65. And once again, we're going to multiply it by 360, aren't we? Now, the closing costs here are 1000 bucks, And they want two points. Well, one point is $1,000, so what would two points be? 2000 because you're buying two of them now, aren't you? And each of them is $1,000. Whoa, this is looking like this is, there's a lot of thousands sitting around here. Okay, that's okay. Go ahead and figure it out. The 521.65 times 360 plus 3,000. What's that work out to be? There you go. Now, are there any numbers here that are hard for you to get? Probably the hardest one's going to be what's the monthly payment? Well, there it is. They're going to tell you the closing costs. You can figure out the points pretty easily, can't you? How long would it take us to do this? A minute? How much money did you just save on that decision? Four grand. Are you willing to work for four thousand dollars a minute? Yeah, but dude, I may forget how to do this, and it may take longer. So what? It takes an hour. I think Dolores will work for four thousand an hour, won't you? Yeah, all day long, right? <laughs> Even if it takes longer, who cares? We're talking thousands and tens of thousands, and in the long run, even hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's worth a day of your time. When it comes house time, if you're really desperate, and oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Come see me. I'm not going to charge you anything. But hopefully we'll save you at least ten, twenty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. Now, I promised you the other day that I would show you how to save enough money, if you actually do this, to pay for your entire college tuition and buy, you'd probably even buy yourself a nice new car. <sighs> Make it a three-year-old car when you graduate. Dude, how can I save that much money? Well, let's go through some of this. Here we go. When you start paying on your loan, here you are at the beginning. The blue part is interest. The pink part is principal. Principal is paying back what you owe them. Where does the blue part go? Interest. interest. It's if you would, they're not really doing this, but imagine if they just stick it in their pocket and say, thanks, I really appreciate that. That's extra money they're making, isn't it? Look what happens as you move into about year 25. Most of the money is going against principal, isn't it? And a little bit against interest. But very early in, look at this first five, six, seven years. 
the bulk of what you're paying in that first five, six, seven years is what? Interest. Because the principal is not coming down very much. You saw that on Wednesday where the principal didn't move very much. Most of it went to interest. It takes years before you get the principal down enough that you can actually start paying on principal instead of interest sucking it all up. Yeah, yeah, Chuck, so get to the good part. A couple of ways to save yourself a chunk of money. First one is very livable. Make one extra payment a year. Don't do it at one time. Do it a little bit every month. For example, let's see, we decided to go with Big Bank, 521, right? If we take that $521 and 65 cents and divide it by 12, that works out to be $43.47 per month. If you put down or include an extra $43.47 a month and you make it very clear this payment is on principal, count all of this against principal, for most of you, is, is 40 bucks a month somewhere in your budget that you could manage? I'm not saying it's necessarily going to be pretty, but you can do that, can't you? Every one of you can do that. Well, almost everyone. If you do that, if you make one extra payment a year, it will cut five to seven years off of your mortgage. Really? So that has the potential of taking a 30-year mortgage and paying it off in 23 to 25 years. That means you got five to seven years earlier that you're free of the mortgage. You know what that means? You've got an extra 521 bucks every month. Ah. Well, hey, you go out and eat. Take some weekend trips. You'd start having some fun with this, couldn't you? What Becky and I did, what Becky agreed to, at times cried about, said, please, no, let's stop this. Okay? Was we always paid extra. And on things like the tax return, when we would get a tax return back, I would take the entire check and apply it to the principal. Now, what happens is, when you pay that money now, that's money you don't have to pay at the end, isn't it? So what is happening is, when I gave them the income tax return, it pulled money off of there. So the first year I did it, and I gave them, I don't know, 2000 bucks. That was $2,000 I don't have to pay down the road. So I gave them $2,000, but it saved me that 2000 down the road plus 28 years interest on $2,000. What's the interest over 28 years on $2,000? That's a lot of money, isn't it? And every time we would put extra money in, we were buying off a little bit off of the end and saving 28 years interest, 27 years interest. You get the idea, 26. And I hit it hard. I mean, I hit it hard. I took all my birthday money, all my Christmas money, and threw it against the mortgage. Now, do you have to live at that level? No. Choose where you want to live. But realize the more that you throw against it, the more you're buying off here and here and here. Okay, when we bought the farm, it was a higher mortgage. It was a lot higher. I, that freaked me out at first. And I was not about to let that go 30 years. Okay, I didn't ask this of anybody else in the family, but what I did myself was I budgeted for myself. Each week I got gas money to drive to work and back and to take the kids wherever they needed to go. And then I budgeted myself one dollar a week spending money. And on Friday mornings, my big celebration was the drive-through at McDonald's
and get a sausage McMuffin. It was exactly a dollar. I never ate in because that was a dollar seven, and I had a dollar, not a dollar seven. Unless I happen to find a dime laying out in the parking lot, then I, I can eat in today. Yahoo! Okay? I did that for the first six and a half years. By about that point, I, I, things were getting a little sketchy mentally for Chuck. Chuck needs something. I've got to be able to do something other than just drive to work. So I doubled it, and I would buy two sausage McMuffins for the last six months. It felt so cool. It felt so good. Wow, look at this. I got two of them now. One for each hand. Okay. Do you have to live to that extreme? No. But you know what happened in the case with the house and with the farm? In both cases, we paid them off in seven years. Do you have any idea how much money that saved us? Between the two of them, it saved us over $400,000 dollars. What Chuck kept an eye on that entire time was, you know what? We are saving hundreds of thousands of dollars by Chuck not eating out. Am I willing to skip eating out to save hundreds of thousands of bucks? Yeah, sign me up for that deal. And the cool thing is what kind of payments do we have now? Well, we got the electric and the water, and the property tax. Look at your budget. It, you know that line that says rent or mortgage? Imagine that went away. What would you do with that extra money every month? That's what happened to us. That line on our budget went away. And now every month, what do we have? utilities and that's it and we've got all that extra money we've got money now to do some things that are fun and other people say well gosh must be nice yeah well it wasn't during one time we were paying those mortgages off okay. and you can do some cool things then you either pay it in the short run or you pay it and drag it out sat down with the family yesterday and said, forget money, forget anything else. What are some things that would be fun for you on a vacation? And we just made a list of things. Well, it'd be fun to go out west where it's open. It'd be fun to go to this. It'd be fun to do this. And we're just going to narrow it down and figure out, okay, what do we really want on a vacation? And what was the thing I started out with? Oh, yeah, forget money. Next vacation may be the last one that Laura never goes with on us because she'll be in co ops and she'll be on a job. And I want us to have a killer vacation. We're at the point we've paid the price. We're at the point where we've saved some money. And I can legitimately come up and tell them forget money, we're doing what we want. Now, did that come at a price? Yes, it did. But for the rest of our lives, we've got this. This is what I want you to have. It's cool. When that one line goes off your budget, you've got a lot of extra money. How much you pay in a month in rent or mortgage? About eight, nine hundred? That's ten thousand dollars a year. You could save some of it toward a house or a car or whatever. Think you could come up with a nice vacation out of that ten grand? And that's every year. That's not one time in your life. That's every year. Okay. Does this make sense? Pay your house off early. Make one extra payment a year. It'll save you five to seven years. Throw extra money against it. Pay it, pay it, pay it. Get free of that thing. It's not your friend. When you come to that point in time, if you want, swing on back and we'll have this talk again. And I'll show you. Um, I'd be glad to help you. That would thrill me. Okay. We got 
some of this stuff done. One last thing I want to do. We got about five minutes. Some of you have friends or family who have taken out payday loans. Dude, it's only a hundred bucks. Come on, I need a hundred bucks. We're going to La Rosa's tonight. Hundred dollars at La Rosa's? Yeah. You can easily drop a hundred bucks at La Rosa's for four or five people. One of the things I want you to notice here, starting out, what's a predator? Let's say we go out into the woods on a hike. Would you want to meet up with a predator? No, why not? What do predators do? Yeah, when we go out to Yellowstone, we don't want to meet up with predators. They're called grizzly bears, right? They'll have us for lunch. Payday loans are referred to as what? Predatory lending. Who's the predator? You? Boy, I really took them on that one, baby. I got my hundred bucks. They didn't even see that coming. Who's the predator? They are. Who's getting killed? The people taking that hundred bucks. Really? Yeah. What's the average interest rate on a payday loan? Look at this. What is the average? This is nothing out of the ordinary. The average interest rate on a payday loan is what? 391% 300. interest. What's the credit card? 18 or 21. You guys were saying that 18 and 21 is outrageous. Yeah, we'll slip into 391%. And that's if you pay it back in two weeks. What happens if you don't pay it back in two weeks? It goes up. Ah, looky here. Okay, if you don't get it paid back in two weeks, your interest rates go what? Now you're up to what for an interest rate? You got to be kidding, dude. Over 500% interest? Yep. And if you let it go even longer, you, in Ohio, you know what about the cutoff rate is? They do have legal limits on this. Top limits are around 1,100%. Does that sound like the way to get loans? Yeah, it doesn't sound like it to me either. Purely speculation. Have never dealt with, and I'm definitely not encouraging you to either, but I would guess you could probably get better rates from the mall. Now, their collection agency might be a little unorthodox, <laughs> so don't get involved. Same thing with payday loans. Don't get involved, okay? Average payday loans, $375. They charge $15 per 100, or they charge $20 per 100, and that's for two weeks, okay? If you just do that, you're going to owe 56 bucks. Now, here's the part that most people really don't feel the pinch on. They borrow $375 on average. You get them through till payday. And, dude, it's only going to cost them $56. Percentage-wise, that's over 350% APR. Because that's $56 that you got to pay them back in two weeks, 14 days. There is no worse way to get money than a payday loan. That makes sense to everybody? Okay, hopefully in this section, chapter four, I've given you some information that may change the way you look at the world financially, that may change the way you're going to live financially, that may give you an extra... $400,000 to have some fun with eventually, or more.